better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Sterling my goods are on the IC covered with the American Cargo Insurance Policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now So you're welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at some of the happenings in the port and maritime industry in the course of the week. And uh, during the week, the Maritime Organization for West and Central Africa, MOCA, uh, held its General Assembly here in Ghana, and uh, they elected a new Secretary General for the organization. And uh, the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport also held a Continuous Professional Development Program, a CPD, uh, for some stakeholders, particularly truckers, and the objective is to deal with the menace of uh, road carnage in our country. And uh, Guta, as a Ghana Union you know, of Today's Association, are also up in arms against government, and they are calling for government to stay away uh, from reversing the benchmark values. Let's take a look at these stories. The 16th extraordinary session of the General Assembly of the Maritime Organization of West and Central Africa has been held in Accra, bringing together maritime experts, ministers for transport, and maritime administrators in the sub-region. The meeting enabled member states arrive at strategic decisions that would see to the revitalization of the organization's operations, which has been challenged over the past few years. The meeting was also used to elect the new Secretary General of the MOCA Secretariat, Nigeria's Dr. Paul Adaliku. Chairman of the Maritime Organization of West and Central Africa and Ghana's Transport Minister, Kweku Furesiyama, noted that it is only through a coordinated and integrated effort through an organization like MOCA that development of the sub-regional blue economy can be effective. No single member state can make significant strides on their own. Areas such as maritime security, maritime safety and navigation, port and infrastructure development, environmental protection, features among others can only become effective when approached with a coordinated and integrated effort. He urged member states to honor their full commitments with respect to financial, administrative, and operational obligations. There are therefore the need, not only the need, the urgent need for member states to honor their obligations. We cannot change everything at once. But if we work together, progress in few areas will lead to progress in many areas. Ghana's Chief of Staff, Akosia Frema Osai Opare, admonished MOCA to lead the sub-regional efforts to urgently improve safety and security of territorial waters. It is therefore our responsibility to protect this area, and I employ members to urgently take steps to address any insecurity issues. I have no doubt that MOCA will be at the forefront of leading an effort to improve safety and security of our territorial waters. 
the Maritime Organization for West and Central Africa, it's aimed at providing an effective intergovernmental sub-regional platform for sectorial cooperation in the field of maritime and transit transport in a maritime region where countries share common problems of demand and supply for shipping services and associated safety and environmental protection threats. Over 2,300 people have been killed and 12,800 people injured as a result of road accidents in Ghana this year alone. The road carnage situation in the country reportedly leads to a loss of over 160 million US dollars of the country's GDP. Accidents on our road corridors also takes a massive toll on transit trade, leading to the loss of human resource, cargoes, as well as significant delays in transit time. This goes a long way to increase the cost of doing business for Ghana's transit trading partners, which in the long run makes our ports and corridors unattractive. The Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport Ghana is keen on making a meaningful contribution to national efforts to subvert the incessant rise in road accidents. To this end, CILT Ghana has organized a continuous professional development program for various logistics and transport operators in Tema. The workshop also brought together major stakeholders that play critical roles in the national road safety machinery, such as the National Road Safety Authority and the Ghana Police Service. Other key stakeholders present were the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority and the Joint Association of Port Transport Unions, among others. During the program, particular focus was given to instilling a professional culture and an attitudinal change among all stakeholders of the road traffic system in Ghana. Speaking to Iron Port, the president of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport Ghana, engineer Mark Amwama, indicated that the program has been tailored to ensure that real impact is felt on the ground. We are signing some kind of uh, understand, memorandum of understanding with these organizations we've called them in here to ensure that whatever we've studied here, whatever we've discussed here, the kind of professionalism that we've actually tabled out here today, they go out there and implement them. The Director of Operations at the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, Dr. Samuel Sasumensa, also touched on some of the strategies the police service has embarked on to curb the menace. We have a, a surveillance and monitoring center at the police headquarters. This one, we have cameras. We are able to capture drivers who are not respecting road traffic rules and regulations on our highway. It gives us nice feet on our centre at the highway. So if even there is no policeman there, the videos, the photographs will be captured, will be captured for us to actually fish you out and prosecute you. Representing the Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, the General Manager Administration at GPHA, George Bredu, remarked that the losses from the road carnage situation are too grim and should be treated with urgency. But almost every year, we lose over 2,000 people. That is only for the fatalities. The Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, has urged government to stay away from reviewing the 50% and 30% benchmark value policy on general goods and cars, respectively, that are imported into the country. Addressing the press conference, the president of Guta, Dr. Joseph Obin, averred that the benchmark policy has been a mitigating factor during the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and has helped businesses to sustain prices of goods despite the surge rates resulting from the adverse global effect of the pandemic. We will appeal. The 50% benchmark value reduction did not come out of the blue. For years, businesses in the country have been crying over high rate of import duties. It is worthy to state here in that, against all odds, the benchmark value was a mitigating factor during the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. 
He predicted a 25% increase in the price of general goods should there be an attempt by government to review or reverse the values. He warned that any attempt to introduce this policy in the 2022 budget will disrupt Ghana's distribution sector, charge members of Guta not to pay any additional amount on duty for clearance. To members of the trading community, especially importers, to calm down and not to pay any additional amount on duty for clearance as we await response of the government on this serious matter of concern. Meanwhile, the Food and Beverage Association of Ghana is warning of some disruption in the value chain of beverage products ahead of the Christmas season should the policy be reversed in the 2022 budget. You and I cannot afford the ordinary things that we are buying today. We are asking government to open the door for further interrogation or further uh, discussion so that we can achieve or arrive at a, a possible way of doing our businesses. The president of the Automobile Dealers Union of Ghana, Eric Wilkubatin, said the prices of vehicles in the country will increase if the 30% benchmark values on cars is reversed. Some benchmark value now is 30%. What do you can import it? Yes, What if 50% every good of one seven? The Ghana for me. I'm from the German Republic. Goyle has launched its Asada promo to reward its cherished customers in Accra for their loyalty and patronage of the company's products and services over the years. We've been with our loyal customers for a whole year. So this is a time we have to say thank you. I said that means thank you. So we are saying thank you to our loyal customers until the end of the year. Goyle is given out free fuel and souvenirs to customers who buy from any of its 95 stations in Accra to the end of the year. The South Zonal Manager of Goyle, Helen Tremanting, has however encouraged motorists to take advantage of this promo. When you get to any gold station and you buy yourself uh, fuel, lubricant, anything, ask for your gifts. We are giving out free fuel. We are giving out souvenirs. She emphasized that Goyle serves the best quality of fuel and lubricants in the country, hence should be the first point of call for motorists. We have a quality fuel. Our delivery tool is on point. If you want quality fuel, that's our super, you get our super 195. The diesel tool is with no sulfur. So I'm asking every truck truck driver, if you want to save money, please buy from God. All right, so you're welcome back. And uh, tonight we're zooming straight into our discussion. And uh, tonight we are talking the 2022 budget uh, as read by uh, the finance minister in parliament uh, during the week. Uh, there were some issues that he raised. And indeed, one of the critical sectors of our economy is the uh, trade sector. And so we are discussing the impact of the 2022 budget uh, on trade uh, in our country. Um, this evening, we would particularly pay attention to issues that relate to our sector, that's the port and maritime industry. Now, one issue that came up in the course of the week was the issue of the Guta, Ghana Union of Traders Association, and allied you know, organizations impressing upon government to uh, not to reverse the benchmark values um, policy. Uh, that government intends to, to, to come. And when the finance minister was delivering uh, the budget, he actually made it explicit that um, this was going to affect certain categories, that some, you know, goods and not all. It's not a blanket, uh, you know, reversal or review of that particular policy. We want to find out whether that indeed is uh, welcoming news or is good news uh, to the traders in our country. And so joining me for the discussion tonight, we would be having the Honorable Carlos Ahinkra, who is a former deputy Trade Minister. Um, now he is a Parliamentary Select Committee Chairman uh, on Trade, Industry and Tourism. He will be joining us via Zoom. Uh, we also have Dr. Joseph Obing, President of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, in the studios. And we also have with us Mr. Eric Kwekubwating, President of the Automobile Dealers Union of Ghana. He is also here in the studios. And uh, let me say good, good evening to you, gentlemen, and welcome. Good evening. Yeah, so along the line, we shall be joined, like I said, by Honorable Carlos Ainkra uh, to uh, you know, shed more light on these issues that you uh, seem to have raised and are so much passionate about. But let me start with you, uh, Dr. Uh, Obeng, and find out um, what your impression about the budget generally is, your general impression about the budget as read by uh, the finance minister. 
in Parliament during the week? Yeah, um, I think before I can say anything about the budget, I will have to retreat our input that we made mm -hmm. um, to the finance ministry um, so that they will capture it. Mm -hmm. So after we've dissected the in input, then you can benchmark with the outcome and see if our expectation is met mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. You made these inputs before the budget was ready? Yes, um, okay. uh, it was requested of us to send our input mm -hmm. and we did send it. Okay, to be incorporated into uh, it. To be incorporated. Okay. So what we have done was to ask government that um, we have supported government the same year, that's 2021, to introduce new taxes. Mm. Because we saw how government um, suffered during the COVID, um, when, uh, the COVID outbreak uh, in 2020. Mm. The free water, the free electricity, the um, stimulus packages mm. that were handed over to us where we also benefited. In that case, we have to sympathize with government. Then government also realized that we also had serious problems. Mm. But in all that, we have to balance and also sympathize with government to achieve um, the year's targets so mm. that, um, I mean, government can have the respite to do its work. So if you recall, um, during the year, um, new taxes were introduced. Mm. Um, the levies on um, the COVID itself, yeah. and then the VAT that was increased, the petroleum levy and others. Mm. Um, we did not make any noise mm. because we have to be rational and we have to sympathize with government. Mm. But then also, um, we cautioned government in the um, 2022 budget that um, the business community have started showing signs of fatigue mm. in terms of um, tax payment. Right. And so government um, should uh, be careful um, not to introduce new um, tasks or add any layer of cost of doing business. Because mm. that's the bane of businesses now. And especially um, in the wake of the COVID, where things uh, are actually um, affecting us badly, mm. even globally. Yeah. And so we have told government like this, and we, that's why we also um, tell, told government mm. that much as we, we know that uh, we are also fatigued, we also know that government still need uh, the required re, um, a revenue, revenue. Um, to um, be able to undertake its mm. numerous programs. Yeah. Uh, programs. Mm. In that case, we also said that government there, there are so many areas that government should look um, to enhance upon its revenue connection mm. rather than piling up mm. a new taxes. And you recommended some areas? Yeah, so we what at? we have said was mm. that government should look at the um, leakages because mm. the leakages in the system is just too much. Mm. And so we, we, we reminded government the fact that warehouses, there are lots of the warehousing system um, um, have um, uh, bring about a lot of leakages, and yeah. that they should monitor and find um, innovative way to seal these um, leakages at the warehouses. Somebody will bring a shipload, say that um, I'll put it in the warehouse where a custom officer will be assigned, and then before you realize the whole goods have come in without paying a dime, mm. when you go to the free zones where the abuse is so much overwhelming. That also, you know, that they have to produce and then for the export market, and then um, little is allowed to come in. Yeah. But before you realize, um, uh, I mean, the abuse is just too much. So, remind the government on these things. If you recall, the, the leakages are the inland track, uh, tracking, mm -hmm. uh, the, the goods that go to the in, inland. Interland, yeah. In, uh, yeah. Um, they also find their way. They do not go to the landlord areas. So yeah. They divert it into mm -hmm. the system. So if government look at all these things, then we also reminded government of the um, tax exemption scheme. Mm -hmm. That has been one of our major uh, leakages. Mm -hmm. And then, there, you know, the tax exemption scheme is not being enjoyed by the poor people. 
It's rather being enjoyed by the, those who have the capacity to, um, to pay the taxes. And that, we also said that the uh, tax exemption should be revised mm. so that um, uh, uh, over 7 billion plus um, to 10 billion that is just going to that system should be added to government pace. Mm. Having said that, we also reminded government about um, the e-commerce that is emerging. Mm. Yeah, if you have taken time to notice during the apex, um, the yeah, of um, the COVID, mm. the new norm that is coming is the e-commerce. Yeah. And so many people have gone into this. This e-commerce um, trading mm. is overtaking the traditional um, trading. Mm. And those um, uh, governments should find innovative way to tax that area. Mm. Because then it becomes difficult to even uh, know those who are trading. But mm. then it's a digital problem is a, a needs digital solution so the e levy the e levy was your was your idea yeah the e levy no um it's part of it mm. uh, but e levy is just a component okay. it doesn't target you see uh, people will advertise um, um maybe hair products cosmetics on their uh, whatsapp mm. and then uh, they will sell yeah. and then people um, motor riders will Delivery, will yeah. deliver yeah. and yeah. all that yeah. those people are not all um catch up into the yeah. task net but what government have to do is that my um, theory have always been that um, affordability. Yeah. If taxes are affordable, those people will pay their taxes with all happiness. Mm -hmm. But you do not lump up a big um, a rate of tax on them. Mm -hmm. So government found an innovative way to enrope in all these people. You know, the, the, ta uh, the tax net should be widened. widened yeah. And then, um, because just about at, uh, over, just a little over three million people are paying their tax, um, where the people who are very capable of paying taxes in this country is well over thirteen million. Yeah. And so, um, if we should find a way to rope them in, um, it will also help shore up government um, revenue. Mm. Then um, we also caution government about its um, expenditure patterns. Because we said that if we, we, we say we are in a crisis situation, then crisis situation demands crisis solution. Mm. Then um, if you don't have money, you do not overspend. Then you have to prioritize your expenditure. And then also um, we, we, we ask government in that regard also to look at uh, value for money. Mm. That if you say that we are in authority um, 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 period or we are bringing authority measures, then of course we should find a way that monies will, will not be misused. That um, we should, even we specifically said that they should put a page mm. or a paragraph that will ensure um, that they are bringing mechanism that will um, 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 make sure that um, there's effective monitoring of uh, these resources that we are so mm. seeking mm. so that there will be very for money. You, you recall that most times you say that um, um, MTN mm. is building uh, a project, maybe yeah. a school project, you be, uh, MTN built it for 200,000, yes. yeah. about 200,000 mm. Ghana cities. Mm. And you see the same project being built by a government contractor or at uh, 1 million mm. and also. And those things are not acceptable. Mm. If people have to uh, be, be at this stage, mm. then of course, and we are not expecting the government, of course, to touch the benchmark, um, the benchmark value. Yeah. Uh, because we've gotten the hint that um, the AGI were pushing for that agenda. Mm. And so we also question government that they should not um, touch the benchmark value because it is the mitigating factor, mm. and that is the last straw in the wake of um, difficulties. Um, uh, businesses are so much in distress, mm. and so if you, uh, that sensitive um, um, pro, uh, uh, policy, mm. and it's the flagship program of this <laughs> same government, mm. and if it should touch, then we should we will be in trouble, mm. and that's what we also told government about. All right. So generally, this was our expectation, and this was input. Though the list are 
very long, but yes. I cannot take all this. Yes, I, I want. To, I'll come back to you and find out whether indeed, well, as you listened to the finance minister read the budget, whether these inputs were captured or, and whether yeah. you were satisfied. Let me with just that. say one one item to finish it so that you can. Okay. So um, uh, the budget reading mm. um, were um, uh, very satisfied with the the introduction because I've told you we want one government to. Um, spread the task net mm. as wide as it, it can. Right. So the um, the ye the electronic tax mm. system. Yeah. If you look um, closely, you will see that almost everybody use the, um, the, the uh, this system yeah, for sure. transactions. E transactions yeah. uh -huh. And so um, it will capture a lot more people. Even when I was talking about the ye commerce people, yeah. then of course those transactions, if it is done through Momo, will do that. Mm. But as to the rate, the 1.75, as to whether it's affordable, mm. that's what the whole nation should also discuss. Mm. Because taxes that are not affordable, I'm not for it. Mm. Government need money, yes. But government should do it in a way that people will not suffer out of, as, as, as a result of that. Right. And, and that's why. And then also, um, care should be taken. Mm. Because then I see a problem also here that um, there's uh, um, something like um, a double taxation that mm. is going to uh, come to play with this MUMU system. How? Yes, because most, most of us transact in um, the MUMU system now. Mm. I've told you the mm -hmm. e-commerce is... I, I think the, 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 the Deputy Finance Minister, the Honorable uh, John Kuma, has explained that it's, it's, not going to, it's not going to be a form of double taxation. No, it's why not? Streamlined. And so when it's operating, no. it's just going to be a one-off thing. Uh, not no, one-off what? Mm -hmm. If I, if I, uh, the tax affects my sales, and then I've paid, mm. it should be deductible on my income tax. Mm. Yes, if it is, it is part of my sales. How would you say that it's not, it's not a, a, a it's tax. Then uh, what, what do they call it? Is it a levy or what? That thing that they put there. It's a levy or what? Or fee? All right, I would, I would. No, uh, it's a tax. So if it's a double taxation, if I pay even if I'm filing my tax and I pay electricity, don't I use it as my expense? Mm -hmm. It's it's. Okay. So if care is not taken for us to put it in a proper context, then it will amount to double. No, taxation. I, th I think that I think I think most of the ambiguities that you have, your your membership, uh, yourself, and your your leadership and membership have, will be cleared. You know when the explanations exactly. are done by exactly. by the. So the, I, I will show the, the, the ministers and all that. It is the reason that. Yes. Yes. So yes let absolutely. Me put the benchmark yes. We'll, 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 we'll come to that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I understand we have the honourable Ahinkra on the line, but uh, let me come to you first of all because you were enjoying. I want you to talk so that you hear, and then he would give an appropriate response. So you were enjoying the thirty percent benchmark value, you know, uh, your membership because you are basically into automobile, and that was what was allocated to you, thirty percent. How beneficial was this to your membership? Thank you very much. Um, it's very important to discuss particular uh, issue, mm. but as I said earlier, because of where I'm driving from, mm. I'll you want to blend blend it, yes, yeah, so that let, let the English. Over, you know, outweigh the the, the, okay, the no problem. Yes. Yes. Uh, benchmark value, uh, for instance, about thirty percent, which mm. the government I brought it out mm. so that you can boom our business. Mm. For instance, if you clear car from import car from maybe America, Canada, or Dubai mm. or Europe, mm. you know the taxes already, mm. and because of the thirty percent benchmark value. If you clear your car at the port, and for instance, you, you are paying about 20,000 Ghana cities or 30,000, government said, okay, I've taken 30% out of it. Mm. So it means you have to pay 17,000. Mm. Okay, for instance, 100,000 Ghana cities, you are paying at uh, maybe the uh, duty mm. free. Then he, government said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll deduct 30% out of it. Then mm. maybe you pay about, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, 97,000 97, Ghana cities. Mm. If we are selling the car at the marketplaces, because of the benchmark value, the 30% we've got out of, the price will be so cheaper mm. for customers to, to, to patronize. Right. But now, you said you are taking out of, you are re reversing the, the, the benchmark mm. value. Means that our business are going to collapse because now, for instance, Kia Picanto mm. at the market price now is around 30, 
to 33,000 Ghana cities. Mm. Because of the benchmark, that is why you can get that price. Mm. But now if you said we are going to reverse it, it means uh, 32,000 Ghana cities of Kia Picanto or morning, it will go up to, uh, uh, you have to add the 30%. So mm. that means you have to buy that car particularly from maybe 36 or 37,000 Ghana cities. Mm. No any businessman would tell you that it's a Father Christmas. Mm. So we, the automobile dealers, as we heard from the GRE that is going to reverse the benchmark value. Mm. We are expecting our brother, Ken Furiata, we respected him a lot. That is why we, the automobile dealers, we conjoin with uh, 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 Guta. Guta. Because we are all traders. Mm. So that we can speak, the government will listen to you that if you said you are going to reverse the benchmark value, it will bring a problem mm. to, 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 to our economy mm. because I can't travel to maybe US or Canada to buy something expensive and come and sell it cheaper. No, any businessman will tell you that it's a Father Christmas. Mm. So we are expecting from the uh, media, uh, the, the budget, mm. that maybe the minister will tell us that, okay, because of what he has heard from the, 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 the business community, mm. uh, government is doing something about it. So business should start grooming. But it's not like that. It's not going to review. If it's a review, it didn't say anything. Mm. So we, the automobile dealers, what we are telling them, government that you should, 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 should come out and boldly tell we, the business community, that he has listened to us. Mm. But we can't just fold our arms and look at him. There's a pressure here and there mm. from as a national president of automobile dealers. Mm. I can't sleep on this. That is why I called my senior brother. Uh, or being, because mm. he's uh, uh, also a uh, president to Guta. Guta. So we, had, we have to come to one table and mm. discuss about this particular thing so that our people will see that truly we are leaders. Mm. That is why we did the, the, the press conference. Mm. So we are, we are here to let the world or the, 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 the leaders to know that we are suffering. Mm. Too much tactics. I mean, how? How can the business grow? Mm. It can't. So in fact, I'm really disappointed what came out on, on, on that particular Wednesday mm. or, or, uh, on, on this benchmark value mm. that you are going to review. Tell us something better. Review means why you are pampering us or what? Tell us who your feelings. So that but we but know is it not just... possible that government wants to take a look at how far they've come in terms of the implementation of the benchmark value and see whether or not um, it, it actually benefited or it actually uh, yielded the needed results for which it was introduced and so for them to take a decision? We the automobile dealers. Because if you, if you want to do a proper thing, once you implement something, there's time for there, there's reason for you to take stock of what you have done so far sure and and you know go back and check whether indeed okay this was the reason you implemented this particular policy did it actually yield the right dividends did we actually achieve the objective for which the policy was introduced and i, I think that it's fair for government to, to, my, to my brother to let me intervene this look i was there one day had a call from jubilee house mm. that mr Boateng, uh on your side we send a lot of people going around garages just we want to know the benefit why uh, the, the benchmark value 30 percent absolutely Ghanaians because of Ghanaians it's not you the person you the businessman but Ghanaians yes. they are what we are hearing from the uh, the, the, the fault or the grounds is the cars still expensive mm. so I told them that it's not because of the the, the, the prices but the dollar rate because mm. we buy the cars in dollar mm. and assuming we are Ghanaians we normally use, use our own local money. Mm. That is Ghana money, mm. uh, Ghana cities. Mm. So if you sell the car and maybe you want, to, you want to go and buy the car outside there, you have to convert it into dollars. Mm. And if you ship the car to uh, the Tamaport, our leaders will come and tell us that we should, they are calculating it in dollar mm. so that you will pay in dollar mm. as a duty. So you are expecting me to sell the car at the cheaper cost that because of the benchmark 35 percent, 30 percent, it means that I should sell the car as normal price. Maybe I won't get my profits out of it. No, it can't be possible. So what normally we do is that because of I'm getting 30 percent out of the benchmark, mm. if it's the cost of the car supposed to go like 35,000 Ghana cities, mm. I will calculate it. Okay, uh, Masa, it's a, it's a bargaining because all hands are not equal. Maybe you can come to my end. I will tell you this is the Picanto. I'm selling it for 10,000 Ghana cities. Mm. Because you have it, you, you, you pay. But if you don't have it, maybe you will bargain with me. Mm. Okay, my brother, this is what I can offer. All right. So it means that that 30% 30, 30 I can even give it out of 32,000 Ghana cities. Mm. Because of what? The 30% benchmark. Mm. 
All right. Um, uh, I'll come back to you, but let me go into the lines and uh, speak to the Honorable Carlos uh, Kingsley Ahinkra, who is the uh, chairman of the uh, Parliamentary Select Committee on Trade, Industry and Tourism. I can see him there. Uh, he's well composed. Uh, good evening, Honorable. Uh, thank you very much for obliging us this evening. Good evening, Bernard. How are you? Uh, Bernard is a politician. Oh, I'm Kennedy. I'm yeah, Kennedy. Sorry, yes, Kennedy. your own Kennedy. Yeah, Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy yes. How are you? Sorry, sorry. Absolutely, sorry. I'm terrific, sir. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you. I, I Thank believe you've you been listening to to Doc and then uh, uh, Mr. Watting, and I know you were one of the persons that uh, played a very lead role uh, in bringing about the benchmark values. And now uh, they agitated. The government seems to want to reverse or review it. Uh, can you tell us what exactly this situation is? So, um, Kennedy, thank you very much. And let me uh, say a good evening to your viewers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the people or whatever that brought about uh, benchmark funds. That's mm -hmm. uh, a statement that probably needs correction. Okay. Because uh, Dr. Sitting there will tell you how much he's fought me on this benchmark fund. Mm -hmm. But as far as I'm concerned, I think that um, the government has always lent. Um, uh, a hearing, hearing ear, I would say, to uh, traders, and uh, we have always believed that um, they represent the engine uh, of growth. So uh, anything that would be detrimental to their business, anything that will hamper their very progress, the government will not allow that to happen. Mm. Uh, the doctor there, Mr. Bwati, will tell you how much uh, the president himself got himself involved in this uh, benchmark thing when the Mulabadu uh, came about. He invited them to uh, to Jubilee House and uh, had a discussion with them. And wherever we are today is as a result of those discussions that he had with the president. Mm. I like to assure them, no matter what the case is, uh, I don't think that anybody is going to bring about any changes that would uh, serve as uh, a deterrent or serve as, uh, as the case may be, a loss of capital. Mm to the opposite as far as we are concerned as a government and um, they should not misconstrue the minister's uh, words of uh, saying that he intends to review or the benchmark will be reviewed to mean that we are going to increase it reduce it whatever we don't know what the minister is going to come up with we don't know mm. what he has in mind as we speak today but mm. uh, one thing i am sure of is that um, he will not do anything to the uh, betrayment of uh, the very peace that we have tried to couch with, with traders. Mm. So they should be rest assured. Mm. I, am, I am just, uh, just uh, thinking and hoping that we will find a very nice uh, procedure or valuation method that would substitute all these uh, benchmark. What is benchmark? Not, if the doctor would tell you that there's nothing like benchmark value, what is benchmark value? Mm. <laughs> as far as I am concerned, and from where I'm coming from, and Kennedy, you know, we used to have a, a transactional price database, mm -hmm. which is the data that the customs or the government agency responsible for collecting uh, uh, indirect taxes mm -hmm. has piled or compiled to compare proposed value with and see uh, 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 the, uh, uh, let me say, sanctity of the value or the uh, invoice that anybody has produced. Mm -hmm. Now, benchmark value came about when just 33 products kept mm. on changing in value like rapidly like there's nobody's business mm. and also uh, the difference in valuation that was provided by importers mm. was so huge and large compared to what we had on the tpd that the custom decided to benchmark those 33 products mm. and um, if 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 I don't have the list here to mention them. Yes. But, like, for example, let's say chicken head uh, 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 leg quarters. Mm. Uh, government have a price of, let's say, $10 per carton. But you will get at times importers bring in a value of, let's say, $40 a carton. Mm. Others bring in $60 a carton. And others bring in $5 a carton. When it happens like this, government thinks that, no, let me find a, a, a common ground for these. Uh, uh, Imports. Mm. It could either be that somebody is trying to bring in uh, goods to enable them to repatriate more money than they are supposed to repatriate out, mm. or they are trying to skim the top up and pay lower than what they are supposed to pay. 
So governments are going to benchmark this value at let's say uh, an average of thirty dollars per cut. Mm. So even if you bring it at sixty, uh, it will be difficult for you to uh, repatriate monies more than the thirty dollar value times the number of cartons of your brain, uh, chicken yeah. leg quarters that you've got, yeah. and so on and so forth. So that's why we, we, that's what uh, brought about the benchmark value. Mm. But today, as we speak, almost every import to Ghana we classify it as benchmark. There's nothing like benchmark. We, 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 we compare values of uh, invoices to transactional price databases, mm. which the uh, customs has compiled and they are using it for valuation purposes. So um, we, we shouldn't allow benchmark to confuse us, or we shouldn't allow benchmark to be uh, uh, a word that when we hear, then we all start shaking, we all start, you know, you know, you know trainer has the air and trying to punch the air. Mm. No. Um, uh, Mr. Obinghe, for being in there, Mr. Watson, I am pleading with you, and uh, you get back to your members. Assure them that the government is not going to do anything different from what he has done previously, or whatever it means, whatever that this review is going to represent, it is going to be in their interest. Mm. Very well. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I think that uh, whilst we were speaking and giving that assurance, Dr. Obing uh, was nodding his head in agreement, <laughs> and I think that is quite soothing, and uh, they probably would, uh, his pressure yeah. would come down a bit yeah. <laughs> this evening. Yeah, you want to say something no, to... Uh, that, that's uh, our post. Yes. And uh, he has been um, fighting for our cause lately, mm. Mm. and we appreciate it. As a matter of fact, we are going to his outfit. Mm. We are going to the uh, select committee on trade. Mm. And so um, I was not even expecting that you will worry him. Yeah. Because in that case, we will preempt whatever we are going to discuss with him. Mm. So I, I hope you will not disturb. We can see that he's driving. Yeah. But let me tell you. No, but he's, he's going to stick with us. Uh, okay, let me this, give you yes. um, uh, the background of this benchmark um, 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 uh, reduction. Mm. The benchmark did not come out of the blues. Mm. It came because there was a problem. Mm. And there was a huge problem, major problem. What was the problem? Yeah. The, the problem being that the duties that we're paying, coupled with other taxes, levies, um, cumulated, mm. was extortively high. Mm. And the, the biggest in the whole of the world. Mm. And so, if you recall, you're a journalist. Before 2019, all that traders or business community, including AGI, including um, Chamber of Commerce, everybody mm. was talking about high cost of duties. Every any platform that any trader will get a duty reward, you need to board you. Have, have you been hearing those things these days? Mm. No, it's because of the mitigating factor of the benchmark value. Really? So it came to solve a problem. Let me give you a scenario mm. that um, if. Our, my invo invoice value is hundred thousand dollars, and then we have um, about three duty rates, maybe twenty percent, thirty-five percent, twenty percent for electrical hardware and others, thirty-five percent for maybe tin tomatoes and mm. other things. Mm. So, if your invoice value, the goods that you bought from abroad, is hundred thousand dollars, they will charge you the twenty thousand mm. dollars, and then add the twenty thousand. Um, a twenty percent, which forms twenty thousand dollars, they will add it to the hundred thousand mm. dollars to make one twenty thousand mm. dollars before they charge you the VAT of eighteen point five percent. Cumulatively, they will come to about forty thousand mm. added to the hundred thousand. Then you see the, those um, problem, those uh, fees levies at the port that are lined up to about eighteen different uh, AU uh, tax, um, um, shippers tax, um, uh, edit fund. Well, all these uh, ECOWAS tax and all mm -hmm. that. That one could to almost 15%. Um, um, uh, right. And then it comes and top up uh, to the 40% uh, to about 55%. So um, on that 100,000, I'm using 100,000 for the simplicity of yeah. the calculation yeah. for people to also clearly understand. Mm -hmm. But you can trick it down to 10,000 yeah. or whatever. Uh, it will, you have to go and find duties and uh, VAT and those charges, cumulatively, you have to go and find $55,000. Mm. That is what you have to pay before your goods will be released to you. Mm. It was among the highest in the whole world. Not even America and all that, mm. who have the money will uh, let their citizens pay that extortive um, uh, rate of duties and other taxes. It was unbearable, mm. clearly. So we petitioned um, Council of State. And Council of State, um, having brought the commissioner 
and all the other stakeholders mm. and then they, they verified the authenticity of what we are telling them. Mm. So this is the rate that we are paying and it's extortive. Mm. And it's not um, a helping business. Do, do you say extortive? Extortively high. Okay. It doesn't, it, it goes beyond. Mm. It, it's not business friendly. Mm. So they, 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 they appreciated we, we went to the presidency. President also admitted that if this is the case, then um, um, we, there, we should do something. Don't also forget that because of uh, cost of doing business was uh, very high, mm. we were losing business to um, Togo, Nigeria, and all that. You remember, most people were bringing their cargo through um, the Eastern Corridor. Yes. And then Western Corridor, those who bring the rice and all that, they were also shipping through the Western Corridor. Mm. And so Ghana was losing. And go government saw that, that then this might be the possible cause of this smuggling and all that. Mm. And the fact that businesses are not thriving. People were um, um, uh, going through uh, so many dubious ways and all that in order to clear their goods. Because you can simply not do that. So government, by its own wisdom, because they were challenged by the, um, the ECOWAS um, uh, Common External Tariff. Right, yeah. So they said that because of the Common External Tariff by ECOWAS mm. Protocol, mm. we cannot uh, reduce the duty rates itself, mm. but we, we, we want to discount um, your invoice value for you. Mm. And they did it, they, they used this innovation to solve a problem. Mm. And the major one at that, mm. And Ghanaians were held it and were appreciated of it. Yeah. You know, when this thing came, you know that um, the uh, Ghana uh, AGI yeah. benefited this, uh, Guta also benefited this, mm. and it has helped Ghana. But you are, because you, you, are turning, you are turning around to blame AGI. Uh, I, 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 I'm and, coming. And because the AGI is lobbying. Excuse me. AGI is a group that is lobbying government. Mm. And you see, when AGI is lobbying government to reverse this policy, they also call, uh, call, uh, called government and begged government, mm. cried actually to government that please, much as we want you to take it off from the trading community, mm -hmm. please maintain it for us. Mm. Double standard. How would they even do that in the All first right. place? And we have, please, we haven't finished. Uh, we no, have, because, because there's no, no, AGI, because there's no, no, no not if I don't finish, here. because you, yes. you wanted to know the benefit that came to yes. people and all that. Absolutely. I have to finish. So, okay, please, please. Yeah, please, please. and then when this benchmark value came, mm. we have been able to um, solve the issues of um, um, uh, smuggling and all that. Mm. Ghana Revenue Authority is having its target, is actually exceeding its target. Mm. 2019 is exceeded. 2020, that was COVID period, mm. challenging period. Mm. They exceeded. And then the, the same um, 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 benchmark value have been able to also mitigate the plight of the consuming public mm. because things have, uh, should have gone higher. Mm. You know, we, prices were maintained and contained. Mm. Prices could have skyrocketed mm. because where commodity prices have gone down over 200%, 300% in some cases. Mm. Um, uh, 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 free charges have gone up from three three hundred uh, three thousand dollars to fifteen thousand mm. dollars. If we have compounded this um, uh, effect and then laid it on the shoulder of the father consumer, you you couldn't have contained anything. Mm. So we contain the price and all that because of this mitigating factor. Mm. And now our opponents, those our detractors, who want to destroy uh, destroy us, mm. they, when they have opportunity like this. And they are talking to the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, consuming public. Mm. You know what they tell them? Uh, you see, when this um, uh, benchmark value also, uh, came, um, the, uh, trade, uh, um, the, uh, the traders did not give the benefit to you. Mm. This is what they tell them. Mm. And our prices are high. Mm. Those so-called manufacturers mm. who are industri uh, industrial people, who manufacture goods, they, what they refuse to do is to tell them uh, but we are giving our prices to you cheaper. Mm. When they said that our prices are higher, mm. they should have told them, but our prices are cheaper. When their prices are more, about 50% higher right. than our prices. Mm -hmm. And then, when they go to government, you know, having told and confused the public that we are not transferring the benefit to them, mm. and then they are going to do their propaganda and lobby government, you know what they tell government? That when they go to government, you, they tell government that 
the benchmark uh, value reduction that you brought mm. have made goods so cheap in the market to the extent that we cannot sell our produce. Mm. So government, if you do not do something, our businesses will collapse. This is the dangerous this thing that um, 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 uh, ADI is doing. Which is not fair. Mm. They even forget that we are a very integral part of manufacturing itself. Mm. No, but and, there are those who also believe that even though you have the benefit of the benchmark values, uh, the prices of goods are still not, you know, the best on the market. It is not true. Then you do research. It's a lie. We, we contain the prices and we are able uh, not to uh, transfer the serious astronomical prices that have gone up mm. in the world mm. because of the mitigating factor of the benchmark value. Okay. Who I'll, says that? I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> and, uh, whoever said that because, it because, of the <laughs> uh, it's because of the propaganda <laughs> that um, um, uh, AGI is, is doing. Mm. But AGI have a leverage mm. of over 45%. Mm. They, whilst we pay duty, they, uh, most of their products are zero rated mm. for duty. Mm. Once we pay VAT to government, whatever VAT that they, they, they pay, um, a government refund to them. Now right. they are saying that 6% is um, um, contained by government. Okay. But if, if, if it's 13% uh, percent that the government refund to them, plus 20, uh, 35% duty that others pay, is it not 48%? Okay, I'll rate? come back to you, Doc. I'll come back to you. Let me go to uh, Mr. Boateng. Uh You had uh, the Honorable Carlos Wahinkra uh, giving the assurance that whatever the finance minister will do uh, will actually be in your interest. Has that kind of like, you know, ameliorated your uh, doubts and kind of like, convinced you that, okay, uh, this tangent that you were going in terms of calling on government uh, to uh, stay away or stay off the benchmark values is okay? Well, um, my senior brother has spoke, but uh, mm. the only thing I can say about what he said is mm. we should be patient. Uh, uh, yesterday, my senior brother called me that mm. there's a meeting going to be held as on Monday, tomorrow. Okay with the minister. Mm. So I think... That's the finance minister? That's no, the, that's the, the, no the, the trade, trade, trade minister. Trade, okay. yes. Mm. So after mm. that, uh, whatever will come out, we'll let our people hear about it. But mm. because of your big platform, I think that is why my senior brother, Carlos uh, Ahinkra, mm. came in to intervene for mm. what we are discussing. Mm. It's very important, but I can't say nothing yet. But on the scene, I'll uh, submit some documents to you. Yes. I want you to go through one by one. That mm. will be my point on one by one because because of that document that is why we are we are we this, are saying that is, they should a, abstain this is, a, this is a very tall list we can't go oh just okay the, no, you, so the duty so. is how much or the total is how much that is a luxury amount, 156 thousand cities that's by friday Le after Lexus we have money. that is Lexus uh 570 that's a luxury car it's luxury car yes. thank you it means that we the automobile dealers mm. see the kind of money we are generating to, 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 to yes. our economy. Mm. That, so that, this is the total duty. Time. This particular car, but mm. uh, le, le, one and a half year ago, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll ship that car to Togo. Mm. But because of the benchmark value, yes. I'm paying it here. Mm. Because of 30% you have given me. Mm. And now, even the duty alone is 57,000 Ghana cities. Mm. Come to VAT, 53,000 Ghana cities. Mm. Only VAT. That is the most important, uh, you know, the, 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 the money you have to. But the others are almost about 23 different, yeah. different, different, different charges. Mm. Network charges, national insurance charges, network charging. Even you are, you have paid the duty mm. just to uh, pay the duty to the, the January. The, the system way. alone is such you, are paying. you. You are paying sure. for. Are the money money? Are you gonna pay for? You are paying the duty mm. and the VAT. The system alone, the big man was sitting on the computer just tapping back, back, back. You are paying 3,000 Ghana cities for this particular 156,000 luxury, uh, what you call, you mentioned it, mm. uh, Lexus uh, 570. 570. Mm. So because of the benchmark, 35%, uh, 30%, mm. that is why we, the automobile dealers, and per se, people who invite uh, imported cars to Ghana, mm. or Togo, or what they call, uh, Africus, mm. Nigeria, very cheap. Mm. And because of that, of 30%, they realize that no, don't, there's no need for us to stress ourselves. Mm. So better, let the cash you come to our main port mm. so that the government need money mm. for our economy. Right. And you said all those things, you are going to reverse the benchmark value. 
So uh, I'm pleading. They should think and think it wise. Yeah. Um, As it, 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 right. will, it will bring something else. Yes. Uh, let me, I'll yeah. come back to you. No, let, 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 let me go back okay. to the Honorable okay. uh, Carlos Vahinkra and uh, because he's the chairman of the Trades uh, Committee in Parliament. Uh, the minister during his submission, the finance minister in Parliament, intimated that um, the, the benchmark values was going to be reviewed, uh, you know, uh, to make it more efficient and targeted. I just wanted him to shed more light on what the minister means when he says that. And then uh, the minister also said the review will align with the policy uh, the policy with current development needs uh, to protect the environment, local industry, strengthen public safety, and support public health. Uh, Honorable, I, I believe you, you have uh, you, you taken a, a perusal of the uh, uh, budget, and uh, you probably have noted what the minister said with respect to the benchmark values. And what does he mean when he says all these things? Can you uh, shed more light on it? Well, Kennedy, you see, uh, I mentioned earlier that I would not want to preempt what the minister is thinking, mm. or uh, to put it in, the, in, in better words, I don't want to put the the cut before the horse. Mm. Uh, but he means what he has said. I mean, uh, and I'm sure, Mr. Oh, sorry, Doctor Obin has actually been thrown more light or some light mm. on parts of what you just mentioned uh, about saving local industries. Yeah, it is true. That some of uh, local manufacturers have also come complaining, just as the Ghana Union Traders Association uh, went complaining uh, to get this big value in place. Mm. The trade uh, manufacturing public or manufacturing uh, uh, consent yes. have also come up with their, their own complaint to uh, you know inform on the fact that the benchmark value is killing uh, local manufacturing because. Uh, the some of the local imports are so cheap that the so some of the imports are so cheap that it, the local production cannot compete in price mm. with them on the market. And uh, true to uh, their words, if you do a little bit of a fiscal study on, on the market, there are some products which, of course, are, are certainly uh, at risk. Mm. So uh, just as the finance minister has said, we're going to align these. Uh, problems and see where we have to adjust, where we have to uh, ship up, or what we have to push down, and and we'll let everybody be happy. Mm. So I I don't think for one moment that um, um, whatever peace that we have enjoyed so far, anybody in, in this country, especially with the traders, I mean, anybody in this country will want us to go back to uh, that period when we we suffered a lot of uh, hula badu and plenty talk yeah. and and to just um, um, add a few to what dr mr boating also mentioned it is mm. true in fact i applaud him for admitting that um, the reduction 30 percent reduction in benchmark value has actually uh, made uh, a lot of people bring their cars early to ghana mm. and um uh, kennedy if you 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 like to know Mm. Vehicles alone contribute close to about 45 to 50 percent of the total uh, import Re revenue received in, in this country. Mm. So we cannot toy with the uh, duties that we get out of that uh, uh, discipline. But the fact of the matter is, um, whatever calculations or whatever valuation methods that we use in coming up with the duties for vehicles mm. is captured in law mm. and 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 it it it's it, it's it's based on a certain depreciation method according to the year of manufacture of of the vehicle mm. uh, right now as we speak uh, since the benchmark value thing came in uh, we've enjoyed a situation whereby even you and i when we import cars we would also get 30 percent reduction it has caused a lot of um, happiness in our hearts happiness in the hearts of the car sellers and importers and happiness in the hearts of, of course, uh, uh, the uh, car buyers. Mm. But all this is happening, uh, Kennedy, because the government is, is, is always looking for creative and innovative ways, ways. to get people to come to contribute more into the kitty. Mm. We always hear government say that um, you need to expand the tax net, mm -hmm. or you need to widen the tax net. But but who who is coming up with the idea? Mm. How do we expand the tax net? And that is why, particularly, I am very happy with this Momo tax that has come in. Mm. When I was uh, listening to Dr. Obi, I heard him mention something like that. But if you have a few moments, I'd like to especially on that for us to understand why I am happy that we have introduced something like this. Shoot. And probably, maybe, based on that, mm. based on that, that collection, 
we will be able to even look at the benchmark uh, values more and give them a little more, a little bit more reprieve mm. in that direction. Mm. Um, but and see, for the first time in the history of this country, for the first time, mm. we're going to get people who haven't contributed anything to the kitty of government at least contribute something little in form of momo transfer. Mm. People like Dr. Bing and uh, Mr. Watting, I don't know how they will be affected, but I can tell them that probably they will even be the beneficiary. Because the point is, mm. I don't see Dr. Bing sending Momo to go and import his, his, his goods to sell. Mm. Mm. But I see people sending Momo to him for him to send goods to them wherever they are. Mm. And those people who are sending the Momo are those who will pay the tax, but he does not suffer that tax. Yeah. There are people who are selling by the roadside for example when you are going from kumasi accra to kumasi yeah. uh, you see people at, uh, especially at um, the yeah. selling grass cutter um oranges banana mm. Mm. even snails yeah let's say this woman selling snails he sells one basket of snail for 300 ghana cities mm. within a month if he sells 10 baskets you are talking three thousand uh, yeah. mm. now we're not saying all the three thousand is her profit but understandably, uh, ordinarily, this woman is supposed to file taxes and pay something to government according to whatever he, she sees or she gets as a margin. Mm. But this will never happen because those people don't are not captured in the, on the for, in the formal sector mm. and they are not captured on any government documentation regards to payment of tax. Yes. But there will be a moment when this woman will want to send money to her hometown for them to pay some levies in her hometown for her. Mm. Let's say uh, uh, in Samoa, for example. Yes. This grass cutter guy who is selling uh, 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 by the roadside, mm. they would send Mumu to the hunter to buy bullets to go to the bush and kill and, and bring them these animals to sell. Mm. We will get some money from there. So mm. for the first time in the history of this country, we are getting to widen the tax plan to at least get some people who haven't paid anything at all. Mm. For them to contribute something i can tell you for a fact that if we hadn't brought in this tax mm. sooner than later or sooner or later the momo company would have increased their one percent uh, 10 percent 10 10 gallons in this country mm. because if you look at uh, the fact that government has created this enabling environment people are able to transfer money uh, or people are able to print their banks banking system 24 7. Mm. Um, you, you you don't you don't need to take any risk by taking any money anywhere um the only charge or the only fee that you pay here is one percent maximum 10 to the uh, telcos mm. and the receiver will, would uh, pay one percent also to the agent because the agent has gone to borrow money from somewhere to do this business if you want to keep your money on your phone fine you don't pay any charge but once you go to withdraw the money from somewhere you need to pay one percent to the person mm. no taxes nothing See, if you think this 1.75 is, 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 is expensive, let me give you an example. Let's say you uh, have seen somebody advertising uh, bags or shoes, lady shoes, mm. uh, on Instagram. Mm. Uh, this person uh, who sells uh, shoes lives in somewhere in Awoshi. Mm. You are in Sakumono, where I stay. You want to buy these shoes, 1,000 Ghana cities. If you send a moment of 1,000 Ghana cities to buy this shoe, you pay one, uh, 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 17 cities, 50 pesos to government. Mm. If you think that is expensive, go to the bank, withdraw your 1,000 cities. Take a car to Awoshi, go and buy your shoe or your bag, and take another car and come back home. Mm. There is even a possibility that you might lose the money on the way. Mm. So for me, I think that uh, people who are trying to find ways and means to water down this uh, mm. uh, particular uh, tax that uh, we've innovatively come up with. Uh, they are probably not trying to see the benefits that this tax actually is going to provide to Ghana. Mm. Because Momo, today as we speak, raises about 400 billion Ghana cities every year. Mm. If we are able to even get 1% of that, that is 4 billion. Mm. It is, it is, it will be second to no other lady that we have introduced within our. Honorable, our if revenue. you can position your, your camera very well, I think uh, it's kind of like making you fantastic. Yeah, this way is better. Absolutely. This, so, uh, thank you. This is perfect. Yeah, okay. yes, so, so, yeah. so, 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 the most important thing here that I, I want everybody to understand is that government has introduced, or we've been operating this movement for how many years? Quite a long time. Nobody has ever come up to say that let us pay taxes 
uh, or on them. If you go to Kenya, Kenya has tax uh, on Yamamu. I think about 3% or something. I stand to be corrected. Mm. You go to Tanzania, they do. Mm. We were the only ones that they didn't have uh, uh, any tax on, on the on the on, on Amo. But what is more, Kennedy? Mm. It is not a compulsory tax. Mm. If you don't do Momo, you don't pay. Mm. So for me, I, I don't think that there should even be uh, any sort of uh, worry to to anybody. Mm. Because if I don't want to pay Momo, so if I don't want to pay the tax, I won't do Momo. Mm. I will take my money and go and pay whatever I have to pay and come at home. Right. So it, it's, it's simple. And that is the most important. It's not like four taxes, mm. whereby when we sit in the taxi, or we sit in the trotro, all of us, the fares that we pay, at least we are contributing towards the taxes uh, on the fuel that the driver has bought to take us from point A to point B. No, mm. this one is person to person. Mm. I don't want to pay Momo tax. Okay, I'll go take my money and go my money and come back home. I'll take my money wherever I am, I'm in Achimota. I'll go to Dr. Bain Opera Square, buy my cables and my bulbs, go and put it in my shop in Achimota and sell. If you don't want to send the Momo, Dr. Bain, we we'll wait for you at Opera Square, come there, physically pay him, take your things, and go and sell. Yeah. I, 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 well, there, there's no big deal. Mm. But I know that the benefits of this Momo, mm. I know that the risk factor that this Momo thing actually uh, can take mm. uh, would, 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 would start to when you compare it to this 1.75 that government is charging. charging so okay. don't let the Guardians not allow themselves to be deceived or dissuaded by uh, naysayers mm. and let us all believe that it is a way to f for the first time as i said get ghana closer mm. to expanding or, or widening the, the tax net absolutely thank you very much General. please don't go away still stay with us because pretty shortly we shall be activating the phone lines for people to call and i know they will have questions for you and for dr and uh, mr watting here uh this i on port here on metropolitan television tonight we are discussing the impact of the 2022 budget as read by the finance minister in parliament during the week on the trade industry in our country please stay we're going for a quick break we'll be back shortly Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Sellful. It doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Moto Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with the American Cargo Insurance Policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my Contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now.
All right, so you're welcome back. Um, uh, my producer says I can activate the phone lines now for you to call in. The number to dial is 20 uh, right there on your screen. Uh, you can call us and uh, ask whatever questions are uh, bothering you. Carlos, Honorable Carlos, I'm still on the line. Uh, we have Honorable... Uh, we have Dr. Joseph being Guta present here. We have uh, Mr. Kwekubuateng, who is president of the Automobile Dealers Association here, uh, also in the studio. Now, let me go to some messages. This one says, uh, good evening. The magnitude of tax exemptions for importers perceived to be having affiliation with government is very high at the country's point of entry, uh, where money is supposed to, go, to be going to the coffers of government finds itself in the pockets of security operatives. It is a cabal. Uh, this one is coming from David Adu. This one says that people need to go and have the discussion and settle their differences. Seriously, they do not pay the duty, so why are they complaining as automobile dealers? Uh, if you ship to Togo or Nigeria, you still have to pay duty when you are bringing it to Ghana. What are they talking about? And this one says Dr. Joseph Obing is making a nice point. God bless him. This one says, good evening, Metro TV. Please ask Honorable, ask Honorable Ahinkra, why is it that if you bring cars from neighboring countries, the import, the total import duty listed by Dr. Obing and the other man is not paid, but GRA charges that huge amount uh, at the Tema Harbor? Why not the same amount charged? Well, uh, these are so... All right, I, I understand we have uh, Frimpong from Tema on the line. Let's go and welcome you to the show. Uh, good evening, Frims. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Please flow. All right. Uh, I want to touch a little on what Honorable Carlos said with regards to the e transaction levy, mm. uh, especially with the Momo aspect. Right. I want to draw his attention to uh, digitization and then trade facilitation as well. Mm. You know, uh, uh, like he was saying, that uh, some can actually decide not to use the Momo if you want to make payment, you can actually carry your money and then, you know, we, we have moved beyond that. I think we are trying to achieve a standard and then keep pace with modernization now, mm. as you speak. Now let's come to the port. We make a lot of payments via Momo now. Now with the advent of uh, uh, COVID, most of the shipping lines actually moved on with this digitization whereby we pay online and then do all these online payments. Mm. Now, with this levy, come to think of it, when you're going to make payments through some of these shipping lines and you have to do it via Momo, you will be, you will be charged with this certain amount. And this 1.75 is going to affect mm. the cost of doing business. You understand? Mm. I understand the poor as well. Now, on your website, you can ret uh, retrieve your invoices and make payments via Momo. So if the telcos are going to take their charge, and government is also charging us 1.75, don't you think, I mean, traders are still going to bear some of these costs? Apart from these shipping lines, news and charges that they are taking, if you are making payments via Momo, mm. you are still going to make an additional payment of taxes, which will add to the cost of big business. And you see, we are trying to join the digitization wagon. We don't want to be retrogressed. So if you want to achieve this trade facilitation agenda and then, you know, champion digitization to make our port attractive, mm. I think government should look at it. Because you know what? When we keep paying and then making these payments online and we add cost of doing business, we will go back to the era whereby we carry all our money. Go to the and make payments. Go to the bank and make payments. And right. it will actually delay in clearance. So all right. they should look at it again. If the receiver is not supposed to bear any cost, then we are going to entreat the government to sit down with the shipping lines. Whereby they just think so. All right. Thank you very much indeed, Frimpong from uh, Tema. We are grateful. We appreciate your call. Uh, I think that uh, Honorable Carlos Ainkra, you heard him loud and clear. He thinks that uh, there's still something that you can do about it because he uh, believes that it's going to be quite a burden on the already, uh, if you like, overburdened uh, trader. Or the honorary consumer, so to speak. Yeah, uh, I, I share a, a, a proposed opinion, uh, but I think there's always a way out in these matters. Mm. See, uh, for example, if I, you want to buy uh, an airline ticket from Emirates online, uh, when you get to the payment side, it gives you three different methods that you can use to pay options bank yeah. transfer, buy a card or uh, through PayPal or whatever. Mm. So um, these shipping lines that he's talking about, yes, I'm aware. 
that some of them want the money, money through Momo, which is faster. Mm. Some of them, uh, at, at the same time, there's an alternative. You can do a bank transfer. They provide their bank details and their, uh, uh, you know, SWIFT code and everything that you can also transfer and so on. Because the onset of this pandemic actually brought about new changes in how to do business. Even the internet that you use, Mr. Frippon, is still going as a cost to business that we need to uh, consider. So, uh, by and large, to every rule is an exception. Mm. You will certainly find outliers in some of these things. But it does not mean that it affects the you know, whole um, um, program that, that has been rolled out. Mm. I am saying that, and I insist, that this law or this tax is not a compulsory tax. Mm. If report thinks that they would uh, not want to pay 1%, uh, uh, 1. 1. 1.75% for Momo on the shipping line charge. Mm. They can do a transfer. Mm. I don't know whether with the transfer, the banks will charge any transfer fees or not. Mm. I know that the bank just need charge something. Mm. But here, remember, that that money that will not come to capital. Mm. They only take this money from you, uh, 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 put them together at the end of the year, and pay some to government as tax. Right. Here, this one is going straight to government. Mm. And I think that if I were you, uh, whilst I am going to, or whilst I have the opportunity to pay to somebody uh, for them to, uh, you know, own that money, mm. and if I have the opportunity to also pay to government, for government to have that money to develop the country for my, for, for my own good, I'd rather pay the one that goes to the government. Right. Um, um, also, also to, 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 to help him, mm. I, I think that if it is possible that we can sit down with this shipping, I know what that people do is that they create an account with this shipping line mm. and uh, they put money in this account with well, the shipping line yeah. and it's deducted as a coin. Yeah. So there are several ways that we can do this, mm. uh, make this payment. Right. And I don't see how this can increase the cost of doing business. No. Okay. I'll, I'll come back to you. Please still don't go. Let's go to Tamale and welcome Abdul Fatao onto the phone lines uh, after the show. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. Absolutely. Uh, please, Flo. Um, I want to know from our honorable chairman of uh, the trade the committee, yes, industry yes. committee, yes, sure. If indeed they want to tax Momo, what happened to 1% COVID 19 health recovery levy on the 13% VAT flat rate, making it 4% now? What happened to 1% COVID-19 health recovery levy on 2.5% national health insurance levy, making it 3.5 now. What happened to 5% financial sector cleanup recovery levy? Indeed, this, he is talking about uh, everybody or the financial market seller who is to send money to the village to buy his or her goods. The film must be uh, additional levies to government. Is it not bringing hardship to already burden Ghanaian people? In fact, the slogan of moving from taxation to production, what happened to it? Indeed, we have put our much effort in believing those people, putting them as duty bearers to lead us. They are not being fair to us. Hmm. All they right. are suffering in the market. The more transaction matter, the way they are going to tax it. They should reconsider their decision. If not, the kind of hardship Ghanaians will experience, it will be more severe than uh, 19 Chubus. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Abdul Fatah uh, from Tamale. Uh, Honorable, this is your take. Please, uh, let's, let's see what you have to say about it. <laughs> Yes, uh, Kennedy, I want Abu to understand that um, all those taxes that he mentioned, all those levies that uh, had come up um, before now, mm. when you put all those monies together, uh, people would say that there are plenty of taxes. Yes, plenty of taxes. But when we collect these monies, how much do we realize from this collection mm. and what is it able to do for the country? Everybody wants good roads. Everybody wants clean water. Everybody wants this. Everybody wants that. Everyone who would go to school for free. You understand? When we put all this together, you need money to cover them. Government does not buy. Government does not sell. Government does not manufacture. Mm -hmm. Government depends on you and me 
to put money in his kitty for them to use for development. Mm. If we don't put money in there, government doesn't have money to develop the country. And it is as simple as that. Mm. Now, you're talking about this um, uh, person in the market who is going to suffer, blah, 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 blah. Under normal circumstances, that person in the market is supposed to pay at least some tax at the end of the year mm. when they finish doing their business and they have filed their returns with the, with the uh, tax uh, authorities. Mm. But how many people do that? The recent uh, 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 census captured, I think, 30 million uh, people as being in Ghana. Mm. Out of this 30 million, only 2.5 million people are captured on the tax uh, database. Mm. What, what's happening to the rest? So you think 2.5 million people can take care of the whole of Ghana? Mm. That is why we are suffering. Mm. You see, you want your road to be done. Government says, I'll come and do it. He doesn't come and do it. it it's not that he's not, willing to not, he's not willing to come and do it. But there's no money to come and do it because we are not paying enough. Mm. Yes, government knows that they can also not overburden people to pay over and above what they are supposed to pay. So they have to use for innovative ways to create this collection. And that is why we have come up with this one. Mm. For example, um, this road tools was given us something around 17, 80 million every year. Mm. Every year, 80 million. He cannot even construct more a five kilometer or 10 kilometer road. Yeah. If, if you ask me. Mm. So what is the point in making somebody stay in the queue for one and a half hours to pay 50, Ghana, uh, 50 pesos and pass through uh, 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 you know, uh, tool, uh, yeah. this long queue, pass through a tool and go. Mm. Sometimes some people even lose their flight mm. when they are coming all the way from the uh, um, uh, western side yeah. to Accra to board uh, their plane mm. because of this traffic. Mm. 50 yeah. Ghana cities. Mm. So government said no. Okay, let me look for a better way to get more money. Yes. To do this route way. And that's how come and this give people came in. Yes. to drive out. Honorable and that's how can we abolish Ab absolutely so we, we have run out of time I, I think that i was beginning to enjoy your uh, submission but on a good day uh with the permission of my bosses i'm sure we can bring you in studio so that we can have this discussion and uh, we can exhaust all the angles that we need to exhaust we appreciate your time uh this evening for joining us here i'll, on be, the I'll, be, I'll be more than glad to come here yeah. absolutely thank you very much honorable carlos Ainkra. he is the chairman of the parliamentary select committee on trade industry and tourism he joined us uh via zoom we appreciate his time with us uh dr Bing, please just tell seconds and then we wrap up just yeah. 10 seconds you'll, you'll uh, i appreciate you know. whatever um honorable um carlos Ayunkra said mm. uh, because we all have to pay our taxes mm. and we support because if the tax net is not spread mm. what is going to happen is that they will lump everything on the importer yeah and that's why when government do everything if it be it levy, uh, petroleum levy and all that, those things that capture everybody mm. about. If, when um, the talk tax mm. was reduced, I wasn't particularly happy. Because right. everybody used the mobile phone mm. and uh, they were using it. But then, if you want to do something to be successful mm. and then if you are doing it whilst this thing is a tool for business, mm. then you should also know that if the person pays tax there mm. and it becomes an expense, yeah. and then that expense will be treated when capturing its income tax. Mm. And that government should know. Mm. And then the earlier that we sit down to make sure that yeah. um, it should, it, it's, not, it's treated as just an ordinary right. thing. Okay. But uh, excuse me. Um, when we, we say that the benchmark reversal, mm. when government say is reversing the benchmark value, mm. is is he reversing it to the uh, to us, uh, for destruction mm. or to do? Because okay. we have a serious problem. Okay. That's why we have to sit down Look, with government. We, we have run out of time. We already. have to sit down we, with government. We have an unfinished business. Yes. Thank uh, you because much. we cannot sit thank down for anything. Thank you. To yes, push. unfortunately, we don't have yes. any more time. Uh, I know mm. everything is fine with you, so let me just wrap up and then. But we don't have enough time, Mr. Watting. Oh, okay. The only thing I'll say is that uh, my people should be patient mm. for this particular reversal of mm. uh, benchmark value. Mm. We are still, you know, having the discussion with the so called big men. Right. And we know better things will okay. come out of. All right. Okay. So let me say thank you to Dr. Joseph uh, Bing, who is president of Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta. And uh, Mr. Eric Kwekubuatin, President of Automobile Dealers Union of Ghana, and indeed to the Honorable Carlos Ayinkra for joining us on our report tonight. We've been discussing the impact of the 2022 budget uh, on the uh, trade in our country. Uh, my name is Kennedy Mona. Remember, we would like to say a big thanks to our sponsors, Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, Ghana Revenue Authority, Goyal Company Limited, Serene Insurance, and Ghana Link Network Services, operators of, operators of ICOMS in the ports. The abridged version of the show is also aired on Ghana Television every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Thank you very much indeed and have a wonderful week ahead.